I'm nearing the end of my series on the topics in the book of Revelation, but this question hit me recently and I thought it would make a good video to add to what I've already put out. In Revelation 20, after the seven year tribulation and the millennial reign of Christ, we find a description of a final battle between Satan and his deceived followers and the Lord and his saints called the Battle of Gog and Magog. We really don't know much about this battle except that it is after a thousand years of the Lord's physical reign with his saints on the earth, while the devil is bound in the bottomless pit. After the thousand years, the devil is released. He deceives many who are not saints during this time period, and they follow him in this battle surrounding the city of God with an innumerable host of people to overthrow the leadership of God on their lives. What happens next is very interesting. We are told that fire falls from heaven and consumes Satan and his entire army. But it gets better. Next, a great white throne shows up and the very face of him who sits on the throne causes the earth and the heaven to flee away. Literally, the universe as we know it is gone at this point. During this great white throne judgment, even death and hell are destroyed being cast into a mysterious new place of judgment called the lake of fire. 2 Peter 3.10 describes this moment in detail saying that the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up and that the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth. Apparently, this fire that falls from heaven doesn't stop after consuming the devil and his followers. It is the event that cues the great white throne to appear which causes all of the universe to burn and be dissolved. Then. Before God creates a new heaven and a new earth in a matterless existence where literally nothing exists except for this great white throne, God, angels, demons, and human beings, all men are brought to judgment before this throne. Books are then opened from which they are judged and one book, the book of life, is brought forth. Based on the judgments of the other books, it seems that all human beings are condemned because if their name is not found written in the book of life, they are cast into the lake of fire with the devil and his demons. I would theorize that the other books probably contain every sin that any person has ever committed, because every person is a sinner. They deserve eternal death in the lake of fire. But those who have their sins washed away because they've accepted Christ's payment for their sin by faith have their names in the Lamb's Book of Life, and they are saved from that eternal judgment that they really deserve. Now, with this foundation, a question arises. Who is it that sits on this great white throne? Who is the one whose face causes the earth and heaven to flee away? Well, of course the answer is God, but I'm really asking a more specific question here. Is it God the Father or is it God the Son? Throughout scripture we see God referred to as what we call a trinity, three persons in one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. These are the three persons of God, each equally God yet in separate distinct persons. It's difficult to even imagine, but it's similar to the way God made you and me. We are three-parted people. We have a body, what people see on the outside, a mind, the decision maker including our intellect, emotion, and will, and a spirit, our morality centered around our conscience and indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God if we are saved. In the same way, God took on human flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, the only person of God that people have seen on the outside similar to our body. He also is called the Father, who wills and reigns above all things sovereignly, the person of the Godhead that is the decision maker, somewhat like our mind. 
And the person of the Holy Spirit works in the spirit of man, comforting him, convicting him of sin, and opening his eyes to the truth of God's word. Anyway, since we know that our single God is in three persons, which of those persons of God sit upon this great white throne? Remember that by this time, believers have already been judged at the judgment seat of Christ, where Jesus apparently sits on the throne and we are rewarded based on how we have served him with our lives. So many would assume then that this judgment is very different, and on this throne sits the Heavenly Father, judging men unto condemnation in the lake of fire. This view that the Father sits upon the great white throne is substantiated because the very next chapter in Revelation 21 verses 5 through 7 says that he that sat upon the throne said, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. It certainly seems then that the Father sits upon the great white throne. But of course, there is some difficulty with this view. Jesus said, The Father judgeth no man, but committeth all judgment unto the Son. How can this be? How can the only judge of men be Jesus, and yet the one sitting on the great white throne says, He shall be my Son, signifying that he is the Father? 1 John 2 even says that Jesus is our advocate, not our judge. But Acts 10.42 says that Jesus was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. So which is it? How can both be true? Well, there's two theories that attempt to explain how this works, and they're both similar but not exactly the same. First, it's thought that the Father sits on the great white throne, but it is Jesus who does the judging. Think of it this way. Since all men are sinners and everyone is condemned, there's no real decisions to be made at this judgment because all men deserve the lake of fire. In reality, it's only the Lamb's book of life that makes any difference, and the Lamb, of course, is Jesus Christ. So while the Father may be the person of the Godhead who sits upon the throne, since the judgment that he passes is all based on whether or not the Son advocates for that person because their name is in his book of life, in a very real sense it would be Jesus who is really doing the judging, because our position in his book determines the outcome. I believed this view for a long time and I don't think that it's completely wrong. However, I do have an additional theory now that I think fits even better. Here's why. Romans 2.16 says that God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. Now, this may be a little hard to grasp, but remember that even though God is a trinity of persons, he is one singular God, and his persons are co-equal and co-eternal with one another in one Godhead. This is why, even though Jesus said that he was going away and that he would send the Holy Spirit to be our comforter in his absence, he could also say, I am with you always. And even though it is the Holy Spirit that indwells believers, Colossians 1 is still correct to say that it is Christ who is in us. Because it is one God in three persons. Jesus even prayed, while on earth, saying that the Son of God, himself, was currently in heaven. It's confusing, I know, but we learn that in that the person of the Holy Spirit dwells in us, it is still perfectly accurate to say that Jesus himself indwells us and is with us. In the same sense, when Romans says that God judges, it says that he does so by the person of Jesus Christ. So I would conclude that it is the entire Godhead that sits upon the great white throne, but that it is the Godhead contained in the person of Jesus Christ. Colossians even tells us that in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So it is still the Father who judges, but he chooses to do so through the person of the Son. And when the Son says, He will be my Son, 
I think he speaks as the Father because Jesus said, I and my Father are one. What do you think? Does Jesus sit upon the great white throne in judgment, or is that more likely to be the Father himself? How do you reconcile verses like 1 John 2.1 and Acts 10.42? Don't be afraid to disagree with me, but support your position with Scripture. Let me know what you think and why in the comments below. Now, before I go, I want to sincerely thank you for watching this video. If you like this content, don't forget to hit subscribe to support the channel and to see more content like this. I really appreciate it. Also, I want to remind you that the whole Bible is ultimately about one thing, the redemption of mankind by Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible teaches that all men are sinners and that no sinner can have eternal life with God in heaven because we must pay for our sins for eternity in hell. That's the bad news. But the good news is that Jesus died to pay the penalty for our sin on the cross. Since our sin has been paid for by Christ, all that is left for you to do is to accept that gift by faith. If you've never accepted the gift of God by faith, won't you do that today? Leave a comment or send me a message and I'll be happy to talk to you more about having your sins forgiven by Jesus Christ.